name is Nicole Stout. I am a USA Judo athlete. I am also a, an athlete that represents SR Cardison. Um, I take it every single day. And today, I am going to be going through some of the basic rules of judo um, and going over maybe one or two of my videos so you have an idea of kind of what you're looking at if you're not super familiar with it. Um, ta -ta -ta -ta. So let's see. Here we go. I am going to be firstly looking myself up. This is the International Judo Federation. That is the kind of world government for judo. This is me. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. And my videos are here. So, I'm trying to think of what's a good one. Ah, yes, I really like this match. So this was in March, before I even knew um, the whole pandemic thing was happening. It was either last week of February or beginning of March, but we were in Poland, and I fought Italy. So, super quick, the pause. The basic, 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 basic rules you need to know about judo is the point system. So, in order to win, you need a full point, known as an ipon, and a referee will put their hand up, all the way up, and that's, you won, ipon. The other score is a wazari. So, that is a half point. So, you get two of those, they equal an ipon. Nice and simple. Um, other ways to win that also qualify as a pawn or a full point is a choke and the person taps, um, a pin for, gosh, I changed the second so many times now. I think it's, I think it's 20 seconds. You hold, it, it used to be 30, so it's either 25 or 20 seconds now. Oh, I should refresh. Um, that equals any pawn. I believe if you hold them for either 15 or 20 seconds, whichever one, um, that equals a wazari if they happen to get out before um, before the uh, 25 seconds, but after 20. It's something like that. Um, oh, and also arm bars. So if you get caught in an arm bar and you tap, that is a full point for the other person. They win. Um, unlike sports like jujitsu, um, things like that, you cannot do leg locks, knee locks, um, anything that kind of pressures the neck. So you can do chokes, but you can't, um, like you can't do the guillotines and stuff, like anything they think might overly pressure the neck. So yeah, um, in terms of penalties, um, you get a penalty if you walk outside, so you see, like, the yellow is the inner square. That is a square, um, that's a fighting area. Um, if you take two feet, if you step outside with both feet into the blue here, or whatever color marks the outside, you'll get a penalty. Um, if you don't attack at all, that's you're probably going to get a stalling penalty. And generally, that looks like this. So they're about to give you a penalty, and they kind of the signal is this is kind of a generic penalty. If it's um, a penalty, it looks like this. That means it's because you walked out of bounds. Um, if if it, if they do this, that's another common one. That means that you are bent over. And that generally comes with being really defensive. So, yeah, so that's a quick rundown. Um, not super crazy. Uh, this is a sport that originated in Japan, so everything has a Japanese name. So penalties are called Shido and the like. So, yeah, let's get into it. So I am about to fight, uh, this is my, I guess my second round, um, in Poland. I am fighting Italy, uh, and I am in blue and white. So there's always two colors. Uh, to differentiate a little easier for the referee here. Okie doke. Oh, that did not play like I thought it would. <laughs> okay, so, sorry. <laughs> you can tell that I'm a lefty. So I'm in blue. Um, you can see that I'm a lefty because my left foot is forward. You can also see that her left foot, her dominant foot is forward, which means that we're both lefty. So that means it's a different gripping sequence. So for a righty, I would want to control their right shoulder, 
which is the one that will be closest to me. So it will be here because I have my left shoulder. They'll have their right shoulder. So I'll want to get my left hand first, my dominant hand first, onto their shoulder, which will be their right. It's going to start to get confusing. Um, first. That is the first thing I'm thinking of when I go against a righty. When I have another lefty like this, it's the opposite. So even though... For me, my, I want to get my left hand on dominant. I get my right hand on first because her left shoulder is on the opposite side. So as you can see here, I don't know, I don't remember if I'm successful at getting this grip, but I get my right hand on first because I need to control her left shoulder because that's her dominant side and I don't want her to do a quick drop or something. So let's continue. Yeah, she rips it off. Okay, but you can see I'm working for that that left shoulder. I want to be able to control that. And, of course, she knows that, so she's trying to prevent that. So that move I just went for there, I did it really bent over. So, ooh, it was ugly. Uh, but I attempted an osoto, which is um, a hook, basically, uh, with my left leg onto that outside right, um, on my right side, my right. I hook that leg, and my job is to try to drag that leg back so I can throw her forward. But I didn't, I didn't catch it clearly. But that's that's what that was. It's called Osoto. Whoop! That was nice. So there, I was able to do a Marote. So I dropped underneath, so we can watch it again. Whoop! Whoop! Oh, I think we can actually watch it slow. Uh, think about it. So here, I'm about to drop under for a Marote, which is a really rare throw for me. Um. I'm not generally the greatest at it, but you know, I made it work here, I guess. Okay, so one more time. So you're gonna see I have, it looks like, I believe I'm trying to look at my grips. Okay, so I have the right sleeve, which is my favorite, and it looks like I have um, maybe the same side right lapel, which is not a normal grip for me. The generic grip you want as a judo player is the sleeve, with your secondary hand, so for me that's my right, and your dominant hand you want the close lapel, the collar, right here. So it looks like because I was struggling to grip her at the beginning, I may have switched over to this side and was trying to figure out what to do with the same side grip. Another rule is if I don't attack immediately after getting a grip on the same side, so not staggering it, one shoulder and one hand, but shoulder and hand on the same side, um, if I sit too long with it, I can get a stalling penalty. So there's a danger there, but I did attack immediately. Woo! For a very nice, and right there is the Ipon. So I did a Marote. And I'm very proud of it. It was very pretty, actually. Um, yeah, and I got a new pawn. So that is a simple... This is all just us standing up again. Um, so that's a relatively simple match. So that way you have a little bit more of a, a better idea of how it works. Um, again, the sport originated in Japan, so you'll see that we bow in and off as a sign of respect to our opponents. And yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed that quick little rundown through a really basic uh, point rules explanation for judo, kind of a little bit of what I'm thinking in terms of prepping for a match like that. I would have done um, at least a half hour of stretching. Um, a little bit of a light sweat. Some people like get like to get sweaty and like drenched and like really worked hard before the first match. I really don't like to. Um, I've never considered my stamina to be all that great, uh, which is why I take a lot of SR Carnison because uh, beta alanine helps with endurance. Um, because it binds with the natural histidine in your muscles and it helps counteract the lactic acid. But that's, you know, that you build up during exercises that's the burn in your muscles. That's more of like the sciencey side of it. But I'll take all the help I can get. So again, I hope this was helpful. And let me know if you want to see more. <laughs> Bye!